Hi Scorpio, welcome to your December 2017 general tarot reading. It's Raina here, shuffling the cards. If you're looking for a love reading, I already have um, December's up on my channel and also the astrological version for December. And I've for the last few months, I've been separating all three types. And I really like it like that because I can concentrate on each area. And yeah, so that's already on my channel, so check that out. This is a general focus. Okay, let's see here. For the overall theme, we have the Knight of Wands. And even though this is a general focus, and I usually um, talk about career matters and things like that, it could very well be a romantic interest uh, that you're thinking about that's really playing a a big role in December. And this person, this card is uh, specifically associated with Sagittarius, but due to um, wanting to make it more general, we'll say a fire energy. So that can also include Aries as well as Leo. And Leo is um, a big draw to, uh, to uh, Scorpios because you're both fixed signs and you form a challenging aspect called a square, but there's always that, that irritation is always an attraction at the same time. Now, this person is actually uh, what we would call a womanizer. <laughs> and if there's a female equivalent, that person. Um, and, uh, this person has commitment issues. You are somebody who I would say, if I had to broad brush the whole sign of uh, Scorpio, prefers to be in a committed monogamous relationship. But this person may be very charismatic and may, there's like, um, there could be like a sexual component to the relationship that is front and center because the wands have that kind of passion attached to them. So if I would have picked the Knight of Pentacles, that would be more of an earthy energy and somebody who is much more practical and probably much more likely to commit. But um, with Scorpio, you might have a lot of uh, Sagittarius in you yourself. So some, some uh, or, or other part of you that's very freedom loving and this person kind of reflects that and it makes it more of a challenge and yet um, it feels very unsha it feels very shaky that you you can't pin this person down and that they won't commit that might be something that drives you crazy that they're always just out of reach and so one of the things that Scorpio has to uh, be careful about is getting into those power games because that's when you just start to try to manipulate when you feel like you can't get what you want. In the past position we have the Knight of Swords and this could possibly be your current partner because I did get like a marriage issues. Um, this would be a Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius. Again, <laughs> Aquarius is another one that you may find yourselves with. And that person, also the the um, Knight of Swords can indicate legal matters. So it's also possible um, that, you know, looking at this from that point of view, that you may have inheritance issues to deal with. 
And um, yeah, especially at the beginning of the month, because I, I believe your eighth house is Gemini, and there's going to be a full moon there. I think, yeah. So if that's the case, you may be kind of on the war path. And um, I feel that you, you may feel this sense of betrayal because we do have this. I'm going to get to that in a second. But this is a very good card. This is the Ace of Cups. This, is, um, <clears throat> this can be an offer of love. That comes to you um, a new relationship or just simply somebody um, expressing their affection to you in some way. Now, this could be even like a family member, but it's like a truce. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not more than it's not really a truce. It's because this is a beginning. It's possible that if this is a family matter that you bond with somebody for the first time. Maybe you've never really uh, known somebody and you get thrown together because of some kind of a, um, a battle. I, I said a court battle, but it could be with something regarding um, inheritance issues, for instance, other people's money. And that person uh, comes forward to you and you realize that there's not that antagonism that you had thought there was. So it could be something along those lines, but in, in terms of relationship issues, um, you may be dealing with a lot of people, and I was thinking, you have Jupiter in your sign, so opportunities may, through the next year, keep um, coming to you in all areas, and you are like almost having to fend off things, but this is like a beautiful emotional offer that comes to you. And um, it could have nothing to do with a current partner or like a like a, a spouse or somebody that you're having an affair with. This could be a third uh, person. Whether or not you're able to fully appreciate that is a different story, though, because you may be so embroiled in your own drama that you can't see that there's somebody who really has those genuine feelings. You may be like hot and heavy with somebody else. And the higher spiritual message is the Ten of Swords. So um, underlying all of this is this feeling that you have been betrayed. Now, um, even with a spouse, if you sometimes people cheat because they feel like their partner has rejected them, has maybe they feel their partner is having an affair, so they want to um, kind of get back at them, and they're really not, they really didn't want to have an affair. Maybe you feel like your partner has totally misrepresented themselves and you thought they were one way and they turned out to be another. Again, if this is some kind of legal battle that involves uh, some kind of uh, an estate, you may feel like, you know, you see the will and you, you feel like you were um, betrayed by that person. And that feeling of being let down can kind of obscure the fact that there's this new love interest that's coming in because you're so busy thinking about what you don't have that you're not focusing on new things. And um, let's see, just keep going. So the challenge card is the Hierophant. This is the card of marriage and tradition. But sometimes in the challenge position, this is somebody who is too caught up in tradition. And that is the challenge, a conformist. Um, and again, it may have been that you were married, but you shouldn't have been married in the first place. Maybe that person, maybe you thought that you had to get married because you had reached the age of 30 or something like that, and you were trying to uh, fit in with what you thought were societal expectations, and you married somebody you didn't love. And this was inevitable because it wasn't... Um, a marriage that you went into feeling positive about. You just did it for conformist reasons. 
But it can be with this Hierophant card, it can be that this person is not good for you. Uh, by the way, the Hierophant is connected to the sign of Taurus, and Taurus is your opposite sign. So perhaps your, your, your marriage partner or your significant other is a Taurus. Um, Taurus and Scorpio oppose one another, but they're considered complementary signs because they are um, every, every uh, pair of um, signs that oppose one another are they're kind of like um, part of one unit in a way. And you have certain things in common with them. But that doesn't mean that you're going to get along with every single one of them. So um, that may be what is dragging you down, this person. And um, what is coming in, are the advice is represented by the Strength card. This is a card that is connected to Leo. Now, um, you can either grow from this, and this would be kind of an inner confidence, not so much something on the outside where you're trying to act tough, but this understanding of who you really are kind of makes it easy for you to be at peace with whatever happens. Also, this is about, yeah, and, and this is the main thing, is that a lot of people think that being strong is to throw your weight around and act aggressive, but really sometimes the greatest show of strength is being passive, is not doing anything, is allowing things to uh, unfold as they, as they are happening. And like if you are in some kind of a legal battle, you may at first feel like I'm going to fight this, I'm going to do whatever I can. And then you kind of think about it and you realize that it's not worth it, that whatever those person's wishes were, you may totally, it may hurt, you may feel betrayed, but you're not going to necessarily um, take it to the level of just fighting it tooth and nail. And in relationship matters, it can be a situation where you're you decide, you know what, I'm not going to chase after this person. If this person is going to be elusive, then I'm going to just let them go. And maybe they'll get curious and, and wonder why I'm not chasing after them anymore. And maybe they'll come back, but I'm not doing it as a manipulation. I really am not sure if they are capable of committing to someone, and that's what I'm looking for. And I'm not going to make the same mistake again. I'm not going to chase after somebody who um, may not be that um, interested. Now, the thing is, with the Knight of Swords, as a past position, this may have been your your partner that you're with now, maybe as a, um, a spouse. That person is also someone that may have had a hard time committing. And so you may have chosen, you see, those are both Knights. Knights tend to indicate instability and somebody who is very blunt in speech uh, sometimes and they, you may feel like they are not very emotionally uh, connected. Uh, the Knight of Swords especially because he is somebody who is very opinionated and maybe even sarcastic towards you and that can a part of you may be attracted to that but after a while you're longing for somebody more like you because you are a water sign so you're looking for that person like the king of cups type of person and yet you are attracted to these air signs these uh, fire signs and that may be what does you in romantically because you're picking the wrong type of person in the first place. Um, you're going for that kind of bad boy um, type of uh, individual instead of somebody who is more um, practical and traditional. 
you know, traditional, but not necessarily a blind conformist, but somebody that you can count on. And um, the other thing about, oh yeah, well I said that, I'll just say the last card. The outcome is the Two of Pentacles. Uh, this can be some sort of Maybe it's an offer. Um, if you have a resolution in a, in a court case, you may have to decide whether or not to, um, especially if it's something less than you had hoped, whether or not to accept or to um, continue to fight for something. With relationships, again, twos, choice. And you may be looking at it from a practical point of view and the thing about that is um, that may be not enough to go on because if you, if you decide well maybe I'll stay with my spouse because they make a good living that is going to keep you in that place it'll be very financially secure but you're going to still feel this sense of lack and on the emotional level. So that's why you have to choose wisely. The Two of Pentacles can also indicate some kind of job offer uh, overseas. It could mean that you decide to work an extra job. Maybe you are already planning on, on um, moving out, but you want to save some money ahead of time. It could be any of those things. So anyway, Scorpio, I hope you enjoyed this. I have my 20% off sale continuing through the end of December 2017. The coupon code is JUPITER, all in caps. And um, the link for my website is below. But otherwise, have a wonderful holiday and new year. Bye.